Hello everyone. Today I'll be talking about how we can move towards having a safer commercial skilled OS kernel. This is a joint work with Samantha, Danyang, Aang, John, and Tom. In recent years, the systems community has made great progress towards kernel safety. However, this research progress isn't well represented in the systems we use today. For example, Linux and FreeBSD are widely used as cloud and mobile operating systems with tens of millions lines of code, but they struggle with a large number of vulnerabilities and provide almost no safety guarantees. On the research side, people have built new kernels with various safety guarantees. There are type safe ones like Singularity and Biscuit, ownership safe ones like Theseus and Redleaf, and functionally verified ones like SEL4 and Hyperkernel. It would be great if we can take advantage of these systems, but the problem is they're considerably less complex and featureful. These safe systems range from hundreds of thousands to thousands of lines of code. Just to put it into context, Linux has added over 1 million lines of code just in 2019 alone. So even though they are designed from ground up to provide better safety models, we can just switch to existing safe kernels and benefit from their guarantees. So then we ask, is it possible to take these ideas we have in the community and move them into the code base we use? The question we want to get to is, how do we get systems we use to be safer? And how can we make incremental progress towards a safer Linux? As motivation, we aren't making much progress at improving Linux safety. We see an upward trend of number of new vulnerabilities in Linux each year. One might think that this is a result of Linux code growth, but there are also many vulnerabilities found in components that have been released for years. If you look at ext4, over 60% of vulnerabilities were found six years after its release. Past file system works have also shown that the number of bugs does not die down over time, even for stable components. This means that there might be many latent bugs in Linux that are waiting around for some zero-day attack. So how do we make progress towards a safer Linux? How can we improve Linux in a way that shows incremental benefit for incremental work? We focus on incremental changes on a module by module basis because starting from scratch is unlikely to catch up to the current scale of Linux. To make incremental progress, we propose to first modularize Linux components. With abstract modular interfaces, Linux modules can evolve without breaking other components, which enables incremental and independent development. Given the modularized component, we then propose a series of steps that increase the safety of these modules. We can make it type safe, which eliminate type errors and prevent unsafe casting, ownership safe to prevent memory errors and data races, functionally correct to ensure the, ab the absence of semantic bugs given proper specifications. Making modules safe not only removes existing bugs, but also prevents classes of bugs from ever appearing as components evolve. So how do we get started? As we know, Linux is designed with performance as a priority, resulting in a paradigm where any modules can access the data structures of any other modules. There are few exceptions, but this is generally true. For example, the task struct can be accessed almost anywhere in the kernel, and each field may be directly accessed by a number of modules. There is no abstraction of states, only 600 more lines of the struct definitions. This design pattern does not facilitate integrating alternative modules. So how do we structure Linux to enable incremental development? We can define abstract modular interfaces like VFS or develop tools to detect direct access and identify appropriate interfaces. With modularization changes, there are also potential performance costs that needs to be studied and mitigated. Given a modularized component, we can start improving it. A common design pattern in Linux is unsafe casting and overloaded return types. Functions often overload their return values as pointers on success and as errors on failures. This pattern results in type confusion errors when the caller forgets to check for errors, just like the code below. This is the result of being in a language with no helpful error support or type enforcement. To eliminate these errors, we can define explicitly typed interfaces, implement a module with strongly typed language, or build efficient type confusion detection tools. Other common classes of errors in Linux are memory errors and data races. 
we often see a module define complex memory access policies for its data structures, where some fields are protected by locks, but the lock policies differ by call path. Furthermore, these locking requirements are only enforced through code inspection and testing. For example, in struct inode, there are three variables explicitly protected by the iLock field, but the iSize field is only maybe protected according to the relevant comment. File systems are responsible for updating iSize, so they must be able to determine the correct synchronization behavior. Additionally, only some code path in the VFS layer will lock iLock before calling into the file system, so the synchronization requirements are different depending on the function in the file system. These behaviors tend to be diff difficult for maintainers and, and testing tools to catch. Ownership safety promises multi-threaded memory safety and prevents memory and data race bugs. But to integrate an ownership safe module into Linux, we need to have both a safe interface and a safe module. Given that a data structure has complex ownership rules, we can't simply use the existing interface. We need a shim layer that can express partial ownership or offer a message passing like interface like Fuse. However, message passing interface is stronger than necessary in providing ownership safety and bears higher performance costs. So how can we provide an efficient ownership safe interface? Are there techniques that would enable interfaces to be semantically equivalent to message passing but still benefit from shared memory? Lastly, we, we see many semantic bugs in Linux that appear because reasoning about the correct behavior is difficult. Linux module often communicates through complicated states. For example, file systems interact with the buffer cache through a struct buffer head. The buffer head struct has 17 state flags that can be independently set, resulting in many combinations. This is also used by both journal module and the file system, requiring coordination between components. Reasoning about correct behavior in these cases are difficult and not sustainable without systematic checking or guarantees. So we propose applying formal verification on a module by module basis to integrate into the kernel. We can use a shim layer to abstract unverified kernel services and provide a sensible specification for proof automation. This lets us enjoy the benefits of an internally correct module while narrowing down bugs to just the unverified parts. Suppose we can integrate a verified module. We then have to make sure it is maintainable. This requires evolvable machine checkable proofs. So how do we do that? Additionally, there are challenges in composing modularly verified components into an end-to-end -end verified system. What interfaces are needed for the composition and how do we extract system-wide properties from them? Aside from integration and maintenance challenges, we also have to enhance verification techniques to build performant and concurrent systems. We are optimistic about the future of verification, both in performance and concurrency. There are many ongoing uh, works on shared memory concurrency, and verified systems provide a safe foundation for integrating complex optimizations that can result in better performance. So suppose we go through all of these steps. How much of a benefit would this approach provide? To answer this, we did a quick study of past 10 years of Linux CVEs and found that roughly 42% are related to type and memory errors. This includes type confusion, no pointer dereference, use after free, and so on, and can be addressed by type and ownership safety and other language features. Another 35% are semantic errors that would be amendable to formal verification. The other 23% come from a variety of causes like poor security designs and integer overflow and underflow. Some of the remainder may also be addressed by programming language techniques and formal methods, but on the focus of this talk. Although our suggested roadmap doesn't fix everything in Linux, we can greatly reduce the number of bugs. In conclusion, although we have made great progress in research, we're falling behind on improving Linux safety and correctness. It is time to ask, can we and how do we leverage research advances in operating systems like Linux? In this talk, we present an incremental path that involves modularization, type safety, ownership safety, and functional correctness. Each of these steps is challenging and has many open research problems to be solved. In order to make incremental progress in practice, we need to set it up so that there is value in doing incremental work. As long as there are incentives to build a safer Linux, there is still hope to improve Linux safety. 
Um, so this is the end of my talk. Uh, thank you for listening.